All right, let me, uh, let me dive into the solution here then. Here we go. So there are two versions. So I'll be, I am not sure why this is green. What? Like, as far as I know, there's no like green button on this thing, but. All right, so. Let me uh, let me walk through this with you guys. So, it was it was Abel. Abel's the dude. Um, and then let's see here. Up next, or Abel? Yeah. Um, this means x is b is either minus one, zero, one, or two. If you feed that into the formula, you get yourself a nine, a ten, an eleven, and an eighteen. Um, here's an idea to solve this kind of problem on the test. One way the one way the you, way you can do it is take the universal set and cross out the ones that are in the set you're complementing. What you're left with is 1, 3, 5, 7, and 9. Um, so, uh, <clears throat> for number 4, number 4 is, um, as they say, a trap, right? Number 4 is kind of a trick question. The trick here is, of course, that these are the same point, right? So really S is just one, two, three, four, which means while well, it looks like you have five things, in fact, you only have four things. Yes, sir? Um, the question was different yeah. on number four. There are two versions. Oh, okay. Yeah. So is that the right answer to So I congratulate you on your memory, um, for one thing, but there are two versions. We'll, we'll look at the other version here in just a second. I'm trying to find my laser. Just a second here. I think I may have left my laser in the office. Oh well. Okay, so here's version two. So some of that, some of it's the same. So still able, still t 9, 10, 11, 18. Um, the universal set problem's the same, right? But um, problem four, you have A is W A W A S and B is S U P. Um, and so if you, the question was, which one of these is true, right? And so if we intersect them, the only thing that's common to both, right, is just, is just what? The thing that's common to both is S. So the intersection of the two sets is S. Um, but the union, you just keep one of each, right? So you don't want C, you don't want what's up. You want the, um, also the ASP is just nonsense. Anyway, A, any questions about that? So, yep. <laughs> yes, of course. It's important. This is important. How dare you? It's not math. Are you a math major? <laughs> then I. <laughs> you just didn't remember. Well, I hope you've imp I hope you've learned an important life lesson. Listen, um, so, um, ahem, um, somewhat related to your question, how many points are on this quiz? Are there, though? Are there? There are 50. Yeah, there's 10 bonus points b b worked into this thing. All right, so this I think is the version you don't have, right? So um, we have four, we have three sets here, S, T, and Y, and we're asked um, some questions about them basically. So the point here is that both S and T, um, excuse me, both S and Y just to contain the elements one, two, and three. So in fact, S and Y are the same set, um, and what does it mean for sets to be equivalent? Do you remember? Two sets are equivalent if they have the same number of elements, right? Two sets are the same if they have the exact same elements. So the answer here is B. C, in fact, yes, the cardinalities of the r rational and real numbers are not equal. Um, uh, 
here, number eight, to parse this, we're looking at P and R and not Q. So I told you that P is true and Q is false and R is true, right? So just sorting through that, P and R is what? It is true and true. True and true is true. Um, not false is true. So you've got true and true, you're anding them. And so the and of true and true is true again. So true. Um, which of these is an open statement? X plus 3 equals 5 is the open statement because it has a variable in it. Um, what is love is not even a declarative, you know, not even a declarative sentence. Let's see here. Number, where am I? Number 10. So here, and sorry this is green. I don't know why this thing is green today. It wasn't green last time I used it. Any of you guys document cam camera experts? I'm afraid. What happens if I press this autofocus button? Oh, really? So it's near death? Oh, man. Oh, so this is fine. Oh, whew, I feel better. Wait a minute, no. That's kind of worse, isn't it? Well, this affects other people, so they'll fix it. Let's see here. All right, so. I don't know what happened just now. All right, so look at this. So here we're looking at a conditional sentence. Here's a fun fact about the conditional. If the antecedent is false, it's true. If the antecedent of a conditional is false, it's true. The only way a conditional can be false is if you've got true implies false. But if the input to the conditional is itself false, then this sentence has to be true because this is the conditional. The only way to get the conditional sentence to be false is to have true implies false. You have to have the antecedent is true and the consequent is false. That's what makes the conditional sentence false. Because 3 is greater than 5 is in fact false, that makes this true. Um, 11 we understand easier. Um, so the negation of the sentence, all politicians are liars, is there exists a politician which is not a liar. So. Um, let's see here. Number 12, I've given you a question about robot butlers. So um, this is just another way of asking like one of the questions in your homework, which is like about sandwiches or whatever, kind of the same question. It's not quite that one. There was a question in the homework about upgrade options on a house or something. This is that question with different words. So you have a company that makes robot butlers. And um, so to get 50 versions, we need enough options so that 2 to that number of options is larger than 50. So if we look at powers of 2, 2 to the 4 is 16, 2 to the 5 is 32, 2 to the 6 is 64. So we need at least six, right? At least six options will get you all the robot butlers that you want to sell to the peoples. Um, what's the converse of the ground is wet? Excuse me, the converse of if it is raining outside, then the ground is wet. So think of this as being P implies Q. The converse of P implies Q is Q implies P. My apologies, I've slipped into standard math notation. Everywhere else on earth in mathematics, we use this for implies. In your book, for some reason, they're using arrow, which I have done universally up to this point when I slip back into my default notation. My apologies. Um, anyway, so the converse is the ground is wet, then it's raining outside, right? right? So are these logically equivalent while we're at it? They're not, right? Because the first sentence is true. The converse is not true, right? In fact, the ground could be wet outside when it's not raining, right? Maybe it rained before and it stopped raining, or maybe you got a hose. I mean, whatever. So that's that. This one I have not filled out yet, so we'll take this journey together. What do you guys think? The cardinalities of this is the whole numbers, the natural numbers, and the integers and the rational numbers. In fact, it is true. It's always true. It's always true. See, saying, saying to me in the review session, it's always true, 
is the kind of thing that will make me perversely make all of the answers on the test false just to mess with you. So. Yeah. All right, let's see here. Um, let P be the statement, Dark Brandon is laughing. And let Q be the statement, Naruto is flying. The statement, Naruto is flying, implies Dark Brandon is not laughing. So what is that? That's um, Naruto is flying, we said, is what? Q? And Br Dark Brandon is not laughing would be not P. Oh, wait a minute. Yeah. So what do we got? We've got... D. Um, so A, A union um, B complement, that is the set of elements that are um, in A or not in B. The elements which are in A or not in B. So notice that the or is important. That's what makes us choose D. No, union is or. Or. Uh oh. Yeah. The s in the sentence, three greater than. All right, guys. In the sentence, three is greater than five implies all cats are on the moon. What is the consequent? What is the, what is the antecedent? The antecedent is three greater than five. The consequent is all cats are on the moon. So the answer here was. All right, the negation, the negation of the sentence x squared equals to 100, if and only if x equals to 10, is a true sentence. What do you guys, what do you guys think? So let's see, is this, is this, is this a true sentence? So this right here is a false sentence, right? Why is it false? X squared equals to 100 actually implies X is equal to plus or minus 10. So the original sentence is false, which means the negation of the sentence is true. The theory of always being true is holding true so far. Have I had a false one yet? Yeah. All right. Let's go on here. So you have an odd whole number between four and so like I just list the numbers here. So x this 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 sort of x is what you get five six seven eight nine ten. 11, 12, 13, right? But what are we looking for? Odd, so I got to get rid of what? These are not odd, so I get rid of those. So my odds are 5, 7, 9, 11, and 13, right? So S is 5, 7, 9, 11, 13. And so, what's the question though? The number of subsets of this, right? So, how many are there? One, two, three, four, five, which means that the size, the number of the things in what's called the power set of S, which is the set of subsets, this is just a notation for it, guys, is two to the number of S, which here is two to the five, 32. All right. How about number 12? Let me move on. We make sure we have enough time for the final question. So just number 12 here, what? It is a self-contradiction, right? Because if P is true, we have true and false. If P is false, we have false and true. Either way, true and false or false and true, these are both false with the end statement. So it's always false. It is a self-contradiction. What's a paradox, by the way? Do you guys know what a paradox is? Yeah. 
it's a uh, a paradox is like technically a seeming a seeming contradiction so we don't really have room for seeming things in logic right <laughs> so all right here we go the contrapositive of so here's what I do for this guys if this is P and this is Q right so P implies Q is the given conditional. What's the contrapositive of that? The contrapositive is not Q implies not P. So not Q is the cat does not jump. Not P is the dog does not bark. The answer is C. All right. Let's fill out the truth table. Here we go. Not P is false, false, true, true. We go what? We got to look at these two, right? So if, if they're both true, it's true. Otherwise, it's false. So we got false, false, true, false. They're different. I, I think, well, no, these might be common for both versions. I can't remember. Um, okay, so then the implication, the only way to get the implication to be, um, to be false is if we have true implies false. So is there a true in this, in this, in this thing right here? No. Just this one right here, right? Does it, true implies false? Oh, that's false. So that makes the conditional false since we have true implies false. But otherwise we've got false implies false, false implies true, false implies true. Those are all true conditionals. So TTFT. All right. So um, so let's see here. How's this go? This one, not P is what? False, false, true, true. And uh, not Q is false, true, false, true. And how about this one? It's and, right? So we need to have, if there's a false in either one of the previous columns, we get false. Right? Only this one's true. Now P or Q, what's that look like? True, 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 false. All right, now we're doing the or of these two columns, right? So what's the or come out to? True, 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 true. So what does this say about the statement? Describe the statement. It is a tautology. Now some of you are feeling bad. Some of you are like, this is exactly the opposite of what I got, right? That's because you have the other version of the quiz. All right, let me. All right, so you guys help me out. For, num for problem three, how do we solve this problem here? Can you guys help me? I can't think with talking. <laughs> So you have what, 1,600 commuters in New York City. You've got 1,110 take the subway, 640 take the bus. 130 don't take either the bus or the subway, right? So if we draw a picture of this, right? I, f I find it helpful to draw a picture. Um, let's say this is the subway. This one's the bus, right? How many are, so the, the universe, right? The number in the universe is 1600, right? And you've got 130 that are not subway or bus. They're out here, right? So what's the number in the bus union the subway? You said what? 1,470. So how did you get that number? I subtracted the main number from 130. Yeah, so exactly. To subtract 130, right? All right. 
and then, um, so how many, um, sorry guys, um, so we have the number in the subway is what? That's, yeah, it's giving me 100,110. The number in the bus is what? 640. So how should we figure out the question? We're asked what? How many computer, commuters take only the subway? So we need to figure out the number in here, right? What's the number in? So we know that the number in the bus union the subway is equal to the number in the bus plus the number in the subway minus the number in the intersection. This is the inclusion exclusion principle. So this tells us that the number in the intersection is what? It's um, number in the bus um, plus the number in the, s in the subway minus the number in the union of the bus and the subway cases, which is equal to what? So we've got 1,110 plus 640 minus 1,470, which is what? I don't, does no, someone remember the number? Or do I, do, this is 280? Okay, so if there's 280 in the green shaded region, so what's the number, the number in the subway? Please stop talking, thank you. The intersection of B and S is what? It should be 1,110 minus the 280. Which would be what? 830. 830? All right. I'm going to move on. So, I will just do, for this one, let me just go ahead and do the shading for you guys. So we have A intersect B, which is where? A intersect B is like this, right? And then where's A intersect C? A intersect C is this piece right here, right? So the union, what do we have for the union? The union is all of that. So that's that one. This is the truth table for the other one. Um, so the, um, the conditional, pro we already went over this one. Here's the other, um, the other one works out to, the, the difference here is you actually had, instead of, um, it's related to the one we looked at, but it's, it's with and instead of or at the end. No, it's with, um, oh, let me not try to explain. I only got three seconds here. Anyway, the point is it works out to all false, which means it's a contradiction. And then down here, um, I got 45 for that one. Let me just take a minute here, talk about the hard problem. So here, we're looking for the, what are we looking for? The intersection of B union C and A. So that's where we're inside what? The, the orange region and the green region. So if you look at that, what's common, the intersection there would be this right here. All right. Now down here, the way to think about that one is you're told that the number in the complement of C intersect A, intersect B is 2. That's this region right here. You also know that the intersection of all of them has 4 in it. So if you put those two together, that gives you the number in the intersection of A and B. So that's why I got 6 there. And then to figure out the number in the union, I use the inclusion-exclusion principle again, which is this right here, which gives me 11. So, Did I add it wrong? 
Oh, good grief. Yes, 21. Thank you. Well, thank you. I uh, definitely want that to be a 21. Duh. Anyway, I will finish these solutions and scan them and post them for you guys. Have a good weekend.